Obviously, great, great win, great team win uh, by our guys. So happy for our seniors um, that uh, have put in the blood, sweat, and tears for for a, lo a long time, a lot of years here. And uh, after the big win down at Texas Tech, we were in the locker room and we challenged all the underclassmen, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, um, to lay it on the line uh, today for our seniors because of what they've meant to our program. And, and without question, uh, we played a, an excellent football game. Was it perfect? No, but the conditions weren't perfect either. And uh, I told the guys, you can't control the conditions. You just got to fight through it and play through the conditions. And it was obviously very, very windy out there. It affected a lot of plays. It affected a lot of balls. Uh, but uh, uh, to get out to the fast start that we did uh, and Josh to have the big return again, and it was a great start. Obviously, uh, Iowa State's an exceptional football team with a, with a great offense. They end up tying it up and um, coming in at halftime, I just said, guys, we just got to be able to make some more plays. We just weren't making enough plays. And if we make plays, we're going to be fine. Um, and then coming out in the third quarter, we turned the ball over twice in a row uh, and, and we we're really fortunate to only give up three. And so we're down 17-14. Uh, but I, I could sense still a lot of life on our sideline. We just needed to make a play. And and then uh, Skyler makes a big throw to Sebastian and kind of get us into the field position. And then, uh, um, you know, hats off to our offensive line. We were able to run the, rush the football, I think, for about 230 yards um, against an exceptional defense and be able to punch a few of those in there. And so um, great team win. I told the guys uh, in the locker room, don't ever – underestimate the power of belief and the power of love. Those guys believe in each other. They love each other. And when you have those two things going, you got a great chance to be successful. Defense was dynamite. I, I think I saw on this thing they were one of 13 on third down. And uh, I, I liked Coach Hayes' plan coming into it. Uh, I thought our coverage was really good. Uh, we, we were sloppy in the first half tackling, but it never really hurt us that bad. And then uh, uh, I thought the defensive line really got after them all day. Well, I haven't. I, that's a good question, but I, I, you know, coming fresh off of a of a locker room celebration, I, I, I'm. There's nothing I'm not proud of. I mean, there's, you know, our, our backs were against the wall uh, before the season started. Not very many people thought uh, an awful lot of this football team, uh, except for the guys in the room. And then we were three and two, and I told them to block the outside noise out um, because everybody was saying, oh, it's not, we're not a very good football team. And all of a sudden, we win three more games in a row. And I said, block out the outside noise. They're going to tell you how great you are now. And we're six and two, lose two more games. And I said, block out the noise. Just, it's, just, it's just us in our room. Let's just focus on the guys that, that, that you're with on a, uh, and your brothers on a daily basis. And, um, you know, I, I had belief in these guys. They had belief in each other. Uh, they just had to believe in themselves. And um, uh, so, so excited for this senior class that embraced me and embraced our staff. I'm not sure Jacardi Wright has played since the Bowling Green game, maybe. Just how much did he uh, – yeah, he, well, he was banged up for about six weeks after that game. He had a high ankle sprain, so he couldn't have played or he was kind of in and out, and he kept re-aggravating that. So we really kind of put him on the shelf for almost two months. Um, but then when he got healthy, two things. One, I want to find out what, what Jacardier is, uh, and he has gotten better. We were going to play him in either the Texas Tech game or in this game. And for whatever reason – it maybe just didn't fit in the Texas Tech game. So we said, we're going to get him into the game early, get him a couple of carries, uh, and then see how he does. Uh, and obviously uh, had a big run, had a couple of run-through tackles where he was a powerful kid. And, and that's what we thought when we recruited him. And so I'm, I'm excited because I think, well, I know he has the at least one more game left, and that's what we have. So he'll play in the bowl game too. In the fourth quarter, It was really important. We were able to run the option again. You know, they, they were stacking a lot of guys inside, and we noticed that we could get the edge a little bit again, some a la what Jacardier did, as well as uh, what Skyler did on some speed option, uh, and, and to be able to move the chains. We were able to be effective on third down. We, we were 7 of uh, 14. We were able to be effective so that 
allowed us to stay on the field probably got him a little bit wore down when you think of we were out there 34 minutes uh, in time of possession. And, and I just think from the fact that we're running inside, we're running outside, we're using the jet game, we're using the quarterback run, all those things. When, when Mess has all those things at his disposal and we're all and we're gaining yards on all of them, then we're pretty tough to beat. Pretty special talent, you know, and I knew that when we recruited him, that uh, he was a difference maker. And uh, uh, guy's really grown up, too. And um, the stage is not too big for Josh, and he proves that week in and week out. And I'm excited because he's just a true freshman that hasn't had the ability to go through a developmental lift or, or get bigger and stronger like I know he's going to in the offseason. Uh, but uh, I think it also shows uh, the young people that uh, they, when you come into a program, if you uh, put the work in, put the time in, and learn the playbook and stuff, you can help us. The, the talk will obviously be in special teams about Josh's kick return, but how, how close was the field goal by the Yeah. Yeah, because we couldn't tell. I mean, the wind I thought was more blowing at our sideline uh, as much as it was helping or hurting. hurting. And, and we thought if we could get to the 25, um, he could make it. And uh, uh, it was as good a kick as I'd seen him hit. And he hit it flush, probably started out four to six feet right of the right upright, and then came back in with the wind. That was a critical play to be able to get that uh, three points there. And then, you know, obviously the icing one to get us uh, up 10. I thought Blake has had a phenomenal year and, and bounced back after a miss that he was disappointed in the week before. In, in your opening statement, you touched on the back-to-back the -back possessions where you guys held them after Skyler's uh, uh, the fumble. Man. Yep. How, how big was it? You held them only three points. After three points. Well, it, it was huge, and our defense was playing with a lot of confidence. I mean, we were going out there, and there, right, there was a number of short fields, but they were playing really with a ton of confidence, knowing that uh, with the wind, it was just tough. It was tough sledding to throw the football out there. I mean, there were some balls that, that, that were making some curves and moves in, in the air, and we just felt we were getting pressure uh, on the quarterback. And uh, granted, they, they dropped some balls. Balls, but I think we dropped some balls too, and, and that's going to happen when the wind's that, uh, that blowing as hard as it was. And I just think our defense was playing with a lot of confidence. And as we talked early and midseason, uh, it's a tough league to play defense in. Uh, but each week, I could see, see steady improvement with, with our defensive guys. Uh, potentially, you know, it, it all depends. When you have two senior guys like James and, and, and Jordan, uh, and then with what Harry's done, we were we always wanted to find out about him, but I don't think we wanted to to waste his whole year. And you know, on top of that, uh, that was a healthy Jordan Brown which we hadn't seen since Oklahoma. And um, and James was really nicked up today. Um, Malik didn't play. Joaquin didn't play. So Jordan had to show up, and, and he did big time. When you limit Purdy to, to 185 and you get one third of that on the slant, how was it to, uh, to keep him in check? He's a great player, and I told Matt before the game that uh, uh, what I thought of uh, of Brock and, and what a competitor he is and what a great player he is, and he said the same thing about Skyler, and uh, we both know we have exceptional quarterbacks, and, and they're both winners. They're both great competitors and have nothing but the highest praise for Brock Purdy. Devin Hankel averaged uh, 46.8 yards uh, per pound. How impressive was that considering how the wind was sort of yeah, especially since he averaged 46 yards and, and really missed one early in the game. So if you you know you take that one, he probably averaged in mid 50s. But uh, our kicking game had to be critical today for our success. And I thought Nick McClellan did a great job with kickoffs. Uh, obviously Devin um, uh, punting the ball, and then Blake with the field goals, the kick return. But even the simple things, the snaps and holds, that, that, that's not easy to do. And and give De Devin Ankle credit, and uh, give Randon and West credit because they were on point with their snaps. He, he did. I don't even know what that was, uh, but he was banged up. But Jordan was healthy. Jacardier was doing some things. Uh, Harry came in. And, and I, I got to give Harry Trotter a shout out because he blocked unbelievably well and, and cut guys down all day long. And there's a team guy. There's a guy that's playing for the name on the front of the jersey. Uh, so, so pleased with, with Harry Trotter. He's a, a great team player. Uh, 
um, it changed possession by possession because it, we just kept looking around saying, which way is it going? Uh, we knew it was going to be windy. We were all, that probably enabled us to play a little bit more man coverage on defense because it just wasn't a whole lot of deep over the top throws. Uh, but, um, you know, it was obviously uh, something that was in the back of our minds all the time. You know, punting the ball late, I mean, we were worried about, you know, the one that hit D-Pat. What do you tell uh, D-Pat? I mean, the ball's kicked 18 yards or something, and Phillip does a great job of getting on that. That was a big, big play by Phillip Brooks. And, um, you know, that, it was just so difficult in the kicking game today. Without a doubt, because you know we're using uh, the the kick return and punt return that have been so successful um, here at Kansas State, but we're using the punt and kickoff of things that that. I've done in the past and so trying to mesh those things uh, credit to all the guys that are involved in special teams uh, all the coaches and, and analysts that we have involved in special teams and then you still just got to credit the, the players because our players go out and execute and every time we have a chance to return a kickoff you see Brock Monty, you see Ross Elder you see the guys that are saying hey we're going to make a big play and they have a lot of confidence on that team I'm not trying to look past this one but how excited are you to have a chance to work with these guys now for another you know three weeks um, really, really excited. We we obviously hit the road recruiting as coaches. They'll work with Coach Dawson throughout the week, and then on the weekends we'll get back together until we find out uh, what the plan is as far as who we're playing and where we're going. Uh, but for for us, you know, you have 27 seniors that that need some rest that don't need to practice a ton. But we have all these freshmen, sophomores uh, that uh, we need to give uh, a, a great look to and, and focus on those guys and, and get these extra practices and time to develop those guys. Uh, Walt was not close, um, and uh, I would assume he'd be ready when we play, whenever it is in December. Uh, Malik, we thought maybe could go. We thought Joaquin maybe could go. I think part of that was the weather, too. You know, it's hard to get warmed up and, and loose. And so um, I've got a lot of confidence in Sebastian. And uh, obviously with Philip making plays and, and Landry and, and Dalton and, and Josh, and then with the win the way it was, we knew it was going to be a game where we'd have to rush the football. It, it seems like only a couple of weeks ago, you we were to go watching for your final game. It's gone by pretty doggone fast, hasn't it, Scott? It really has. Um, and now K State takes third or takes ninth and has the opportunity to finish third in the league. And you're the first coach in case of history to finish the great wins in the first season. You're the stats guy. I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> what has this ride been like for you? Um uh, it's been an unbelievable ride, and and uh, an unbelievable ride for all of us. And you're never not going to hear me say me. Unbelievable ride for all of us as a staff. And once again, my hat goes off to our seniors because they're the ones that had to embrace us. They're the ones that had the disruption for years, five years into their time, uh, that they get a new staff and a new coach. Um, we gave them everything we had. We, we poured our heart and soul into those kids, and they responded. And every one of those seniors, when they ran down there, shook their hand, gave them a hug, told them how much I loved them. They told me how much they loved me and appreciated what, what we have done together. Uh, and so that, that was just a cool experience. And, and uh, I'll, I'll reflect it in time, but Probably is going to be some time too. We got a last question here. <clears throat> so besides Ryan Day at Ohio State, out of all the first year head coaches in the Power Five, you seem like to have the most success. What does that, how does that speak volumes for the foundation and the culture that you established? <laughs> Yeah, we're trying. I mean, it, I, there's been some tough times now, guys, and you guys know that. You know, we, we, we've been a little bit of a roller coaster, but I always told you guys we'd continue to get better, and the kid, get the guys would continue to buy in and learn more and take more ownership and get more invested in the program, and they've done that. So uh, let's credit where credit is due, and that's with the players uh, and, and the assistant coaches. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations.